All right, guys, welcome back to the channel, my kitchen, my living room. And yes, that is my YouTube channel looping in the background, doing my best to send subliminal messages to every one of you. If you haven't already, like and subscribe, and that helps me out. Old man winter is bearing down on us pretty hard here in Pennsylvania. It's January the 15th. It was eight degrees this morning. It's 10 degrees now, and it will be a high of 18 degrees before it drops back off to three degrees tonight. And then of course, we're all expecting Sunday's snowstorm. And so in the meantime, what better opportunity for me to seize the moment and talk to you about custom gear modifications, latest offering, and that is the saddle hand muff. So one of the challenges of saddle hunting during the late season is what do I do with my hands when they get cold? Since the bottom portion of your saddle generally lands right on your pant pocket or in that vicinity, you can't always utilize them without shifting that bottom portion of your saddle either up or down, which in the long term affects your comfort. It's also tricky to try to utilize your coat pocket as well. For the majority of single panel saddles, the bridge loops come right over top your coat pockets. Now you can squeeze your hands in between your bridge loops uh, at times, or you can push the top of your, your saddle down and you can kind of wedge your hand into your pockets. But again, long term, that affects the comfort. So to remedy that problem, Jerry over at Custom Gear Modifications has come up with a solution and that solution is what he calls the saddle hand muff. Now of course hand muffs are not new to the hunting industry by no means, but a hand muff that is thin or streamlined, functional, and can be easily attached to your saddle is. And so Custom Gear Modifications is attempting to fill a void in late season saddle hunting and that is, what do you do with your hands when they are cold? So let me break this down for you real quick. Essentially, when you purchase this off of Custom Gear Modifications webpage, it comes in at $40. When you get it in the mail, it comes just like this. Now, in this front mesh pocket here, you'll have these two, uh, two loops of paracord with these green tension bands on them. These are what you use to attach the hand muff to the saddle. I will give you a couple up close videos of that right here on this column, but also out in the woods. And so I'll show you how to put this on the saddle itself. It comes in at 17 inches wide, seven inches tall. And when I weighed it on my, my scale here, it came in at 6.1 ounces. So 6.1 ounces, which isn't too bad. On both ends of the muff, you have these draw strings where you can, you can cinch them down all the way which honestly, uh, I was going to do it yesterday when I was out hunting, but I didn't. Right from the truck, I would open up your hand warmers so you don't have to open up the plastic in the woods. I would open up the hand warmers, how many ever you want to stuff in there, and I would activate them. I would throw them in the hand muff, and then I would go ahead and cinch these down. Uh, that would be in your pack, and then when you get ready to put this on the saddle, uh, they're already in there and they're hot and they're activated. That's how I would handle that. So on each side you have these drawstrings. Uh, they're also come in handy for figuring out just how big you want the opening so that when you slip your hand in there that you know you can pull it in and out and then when you push your hand all the way in your coat cuff will kind of close off any heat from escaping. Also there are four components or materials that make up this hand muff. The first, as you see it right here, the main body is a 500 denier Kodoro fabric. Now, anybody that knows anything about Kodoro, it's tough as nails. It's strong, and so the 500 denier, it has a water repellent on the outside, but on the back side of it, there's like a rubberized coating. And I talked to Jerry about kind of his idea of why he made the muff the way he did, and his goal was to have a streamlined hand muff that you know wouldn't be bulky and that could attach to the saddle easy so this 500 denier fabric with that rubberized backing it kind of helps aid in holding in heat and so the heat retention um, was kind of the mindset behind using the Kodora fabric uh, right next to the Kodora fabric there is a cotton twill uh, like a little knitting there to help with some heat retention and then on the inside you see a fleece lining and so 
Kedora rubberized backing, the cotton twill, the fleece lining, and then of course you got your outside, which, which you have this, this mesh, um, the front pockets mesh as well. And then that mesh with the fleece lining right here on the end kind of makes it easy to cinch that down, kind of pliable on the end. Just for reference real quick, this front pocket, what I did yesterday um, and what I'm going to continue to do, this is a iPhone uh, 13 Pro Max, I believe. I know it's the Pro Max. And that with this case just slides right into the front pouch pocket. So that will kind of give you an idea. And to be honest, I have a chest pocket on my pirate jacket from Badlands. That's where I'd put my phone just to help keep that warm. But just for reference size, if you wanted to, you could throw a phone in there. If your phone's even bigger, it can go in there uh, in the vertical orientation. So what I did was I took a pod of my milkweed and I just stuffed it in there as well. I, you, you could empty out a milkweed pod into there. Um, but I kept it in the pod just to try to contain it some and then you know that makes it easy to reach down in and then you can grab a milkweed and you know do your thing with the milkweed. So um, I guess some milkweed floating around here. But anyway that is the general breakdown of this hand muff and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to attach this to the saddle and then I'm going to give you several areas of just honest feedback and some improvement that I think that uh, Jerry could make on this that would make this the bomb diggity. So let's jump over here on the column and also I'll give you some close-ups when I was in the woods attaching this to your saddle. So all you have to do to hook up the hand muff to your saddle is to take those continuous loops of paracord, simply girth hitch them right here to your bridge like so. You add on both of them. Like so. They'll hang there, and as you can see, with this tension band here, it creates a little loop. All you do then is take the button of your hand muff, put it through the loop, and then slide that tension band down. As you can see, it is, it is really, really easy to hang off of your saddle. And of course, right now, it's probably five inches away from my body, but at the same time, it holds the hand muff right in a very convenient convenient position just to put your hands in there and let the hand muff actually hold the weight of your hands. Let me give you a few concluding thoughts in regards to the hand muff from custom gear modifications. One, I really like the fact that Jerry is thinking about saddle hunting into the late season. I'm a huge proponent of hunting late season. I like the fact that most hunters have vacated the woods. Deer are returning to predictive patterns. And then I just like to be out there in the cold and the elements. And so I like hunting late season. I've asked the question, what do you do with cold hands? And some might just reply, wear gloves. And that is true. You can. But I'm an archer and I don't like to wear gloves. I don't like to have any glove on my left hand that goes into the throat of my grip unless it's like a liner glove. I do have merino wool liner gloves from Badlands, but one is missing and the other one has holes in them. And so... I don't like to wear bulky gloves at all, and plus I use a hinge release, and so for me, I've always used some type of hand muff, and if I'm wearing gloves, I have to pull the gloves off and stash them into a backpack, and so it's more noise, it's more movement, rather than just pulling my hands out of a hand muff, and then I'm ready to go. And so I like the fact that he's thinking about saddle hunting into the late season. Um, this, as you've seen, it attaches to the saddle very, very easily. In a matter of probably 20 seconds, the hand muff can be attached to your, your saddle. Also, this front pocket here, if you wanted to, you could put your, your phone. As I've shown you, I just stuffed a milkweed pod into that, and you, know, you could use it for whatever you wanted to. Um, and all of the things, 6.1 ounces, 5.9 ounces, it's lightweight. You can pack this thing up. You can put your your hot hands in there from the truck and by the time you get to your your tree it's already heated up and so there's a lot to like about this hand muff. If I had one negative complaint it would be this. I love Kodora fabric. It's tough, it's durable, the outside has a water repellent on it and the inside actually has a rubber backing coating and so there's a lot to like about Kodora but anybody that knows anything about Kodora it is noisy and so just by rubbing my hands on it, you can hear that. Okay, so 
Again, I'm an archer, and so anything that produces noise uh, stresses me out. And so I would like to see, even if he kept this as an option, a Kedora body, I would like to see perhaps another option for archery hunters that is a little bit more quiet, you know, something that still retains heat, but isn't as noisy as this. Now, I will say once this is hanging on the saddle, it's not sitting there making noise. When your hands are, are in this hand moth, there is no noise. And even pulling your hands out, uh, as archery hunters, we don't make quick movements. We're not, we're not just ripping our hand out or anything like that. We're slowly pulling our hand out. And so you can, you can be quiet, but for the sake of the potential of noise, that's where I would like to see perhaps a different outer body. But that is really the biggest complaint with this. My other hand muffs, they don't have drawstrings here. Okay, so this could be a plus and a minus. The fact that they have drawstrings makes it nice because I can activate these hand warmers and then I can cinch that all the way down so nothing's going to be falling out of that. I can fold this up, I can stuff it into my backpack, and then when I'm out, I can open these up and now I already have activated hand warmers. But the, the other downside about these drawstrings is you have to pretty much preset preset the opening to fit your hand in here. And you don't want a loose opening because you don't want all your heat escaping. And so you have to kind of preset, preset the distance you want that opening to be to where you kind of can wiggle your hands in there and you can still see that there's an opening. Whereas on my other hand muff, this is elastic and the hole is probably only an inch to two at its opening and so you just push your hands in there and that elastic will wrap around your wrist. So there is the potential for heat escape with these drawstrings, but if you can find it where, where you want it and you put your hands in there and then you go ahead and shove your hand in, the cuff of your coat kind of does block and will help retain some heat. And so on the pos positive side, these drawstrings can be nice and the fact that you can cinch this down and keep your heat warmers in there on the negative side, trying to figure out exactly the, the opening, the size of the opening and then heat loss. And so that might be something that Jerry wants to tackle as well. But overall, I, I really like the idea. I really like the concept um, and this will definitely be put to use when I am saddle hunting in the late season. So if you have any questions, as always, thank you for watching. Drop the questions in the comments below. And until next time, good luck to you.